So the city was buzzing this weekend and it was filled with some major A-list events. The city's still buzzing? It is. Some buzzing people could time. still be buzzed uh, <laughs> after this weekend. Astrid in the ATL was there for all of it and she joins us in studio with a wrap up of the hottest ticket items that we witnessed this weekend. Astrid. Oh my God, the energy in the city was like nothing else. Everything from VIP parties to free concerts. Atlanta really put on a great show and we were there covering it all just for you. It's the biggest game of the year, but it also means the biggest parties with the biggest stars. They showed up in Atlanta for Super Bowl 53. This is one of the first official parties to help kick off Super Bowl weekend. Right now we are at the World of Coca-Cola where we are saluting some Hispanic athletes and broadcasters. We are honoring them for their contributions on the field and off. Take a look at the reception area. How do you feel about this next coming year? I'm excited. I'm excited. I want to I want to play right now. I'm so bored at home. Yeah, I want to come back. Listen, if you're bored, we can hang out. Ah, uh, yeah, I know, I know. We, we need it, we need it. Then Thursday, we made our way to Bud Light Music Festival, where the red carpet was star-studded. For sure, I thank you, Atlanta, because we represent Atlanta, we represent the culture. Oh, oh, oh. Headliners Migos, Sierra, and Ludacris What's up? What's up? brought the ATL flavor. Hello. When people think Atlanta, they think you. Well, how does that make you feel? I mean, not just me. You know, I got to be humble and honestly say it's a lot of artists. There's so many great artists from Atlanta, you know, and it's embedded in the culture of everything going on. I just feel like this is the mecca of everything like culture. Friday, the music fest continued with rock star rapper Post Malone. He hit the stage with the original rock stars, Aerosmith. Night three of the music fest was dripping in finesse. The combination of chart toppers, Cardi B and Bruno Mars, had the city buzzing. Can I get a quick year? Yeah! I love the city for what it is. I, I, I think it was an awesome place to hold a Super Bowl, hold, hold a big time event like this, and so far they haven't disappointed us. It's, it's great. I feel, I feel very grateful and it's such an honor to be here. Who are you looking forward to seeing tonight? Everybody! Lil Jon's gonna be here. <laughs> Cardi's gonna be here. Got a bag of big money. Bruno. Making it the most anticipated concert ahead of the NFL's most anticipated night. The boys in the back hiding near Corona, my kids do. And I thought about you. And Sunday before the big game, I attended the Tim McGraw tailgate. The house was packed last night for this show. He performed his brand new single, Thought About You, at the tailgate red carpet. We also talked to some stars about our city and their Super Bowl memories. I mean, it's still unbelievable, even 11 years later, man. I, I think um, having the opportunity to play a team like the Patriots, 18 and 0, the whole New York Boston rivalry, um, you know, two um, mammoth franchises in the NFL going, going against each other. I mean, you can't write a better script. I, I've been to Atlanta f a few times to work, and um, really the thing I probably enjoy the most is the people. I just enjoy the fact that everybody's really kind and helpful and sharing, and the food's really great here. Then we went to the halftime show, much anticipated and controversial. Maroon 5 was joined by Travis Scott and Atlanta's own big boy. The band also shared the stage with a local drum line and gospel choir. Maroon 5 performed many of their top songs, including Girls Like You. But the criticism has been swift. Many people calling this show a bit boring and strange. Mm -hmm. The tribute to Bo SpongeBob was also a bit weird. And the fact that Adam Levine kept shedding layers of clothing off after every song. A lot of people felt like that was a reach, too much attention. Yeah, just like, and what was the point of it? Right. And we talked about it. I mean, could a woman, you know. I've gotten away with that. Sure. And the whole time while the Super Bowl was going on, Kaepernick, Colin Kaepernick, who a lot of people are protesting the NFL because in support mm -hmm. of him, was tweeting pictures of people that are tweeting, uh, you know, being yeah. supportive of him, not watching the NFL. So there were two different shows going on at the same time, one on TV, one on Twitter. Kind of a lose-lose situation for Maroon 5 when you think about it. It's Either they're going to lose out on yeah. the opportunity, right, and say no, or they show up and get panned. It's not like they came in and blew anybody's socks off. It's a tough you know, position to be in as well. Under everything, you know, the umbrella mm -hmm. of everything that's going on with the social justice supporting Kaepernick, there's a lot of pressure on that too. I don't think it was a win situation for him. I think regardless, people mm -hmm. were, gonna, were going to yeah. say something. Yeah. And yeah, the, the half-clothed stuff, yeah. I, I just don't, you know. 
Each well, song we lost the coat, then we lost the jacket, then we lost the shirt, then yeah. we lost the tank top. And it was all gone. But mm -hmm. you know what? I will be now moving on to the Grammys because that's yeah. coming up next in a you couple gotta pack. days. I got a pack. We're going to LA to bring you the best of all the local artists that have been nominated. We have Tony Braxton, Donald Glover, 21 Savage, which we're going yeah. to get into tonight mm -hmm. at 9 p.m. on Peachtree TV. All right, Astrid, you're a busy woman. Yes. All right, keep it up. Thank you.